I'm the Climate Change Policy Officer at Lancaster City Council. I sit in Diane's team planning policy, but I work across the council with council housing, I work with regeneration, and I work with our corporate teams on understanding how we can do better for people in planning. Then, as a side quest, I'm also a member of Lancaster Co-Housing, which is a community-led housing development. And I sit on uh, as a tenant liaison for the Community Land Trust in Halton, which also brings forward affordable housing. So I'm here with a few different hats on to talk about a few different things. Um, I didn't look at you yet. <laughs> this is the next slide. Before I get into that though, the first thing I wanna say is Lancaster, we need to recognize the young people in our district. In 2019, the young people in our district challenged the city council to declare a climate emergency. Thanks to them, my post was created and we started on this mission to start to reduce our emissions and see what we can do better. The other people I need to thank are the Lancaster People Street. In 2020, a group just like you met in Lancaster to see what could we do in Lancaster a little bit better to make things better for climate change. They did the same process that you're going, or a similar process to what you're going through here, and they deliberated and they came up with some recommendations. In my post, what I then did is I took those recommendations and said, what of these are the city council's responsibility? So went through the list, and then I took them and said, where can we stick them in into our city council's policies? So you, we're gonna talk a little bit about that today, but what I want to say is that this is a really powerful process, and I really appreciate you taking your time to do that today. So the next thing is emissions. I'm the climate change policy officer, but it's not just about carbon. We were talking today about that, like carbon emissions are associated with energy, and the more energy you're spending, the more expensive it is. These are the building emissions for Lancaster, okay? And you can see that most of those emissions are coming from houses. Every single carbon, ton of carbon that's emitted is pounds that are coming out of our pockets. So my job is not just to look at carbon emissions, but see how can we make things better for people? How can we put more money in our pockets and save the planet at the same time? So there is a way to take those emissions and reduce them by about 80%. And that's by building things differently. That's before you even look at how you supply energy to a building. I'm gonna now switch to the community-led housing side of things. So I'm gonna show you a short video from a passive house development. This is a development that builds their houses in a different way, which reduces the amount of energy that they use. Meaning that you can have, so people that live in these houses, the people that get the winter fuel supplement, they use that for their energy bill for the entire year and have money left over. This is Lancaster Co-Housing. It's a community of 41 eco-homes created and run by the people who live here. Our aim is to make it easy for people to live sustainably. We all have our own home, but we also have shared communal facilities like the common house here where we sometimes meet up and eat together and socialise. We've got a shared children's room, shared laundry, a shared food store where we get in our own organic food. Sharing helps save carbon. Take our car club. We've got seven cars, three of them electric, among 30 households. And our shared laundry has four machines for 80 people. So if I need anything, whether it's a drill or a tent or a map, I just email around my neighbours and somebody lends it to me. So I hardly buy any stuff nowadays. Our homes are passive house, that's very energy efficient. They use about 15% of the energy to heat our homes compared to a conventional home, and they're always warm. Our electricity comes through our own microgrid from two community-owned cooperatives. One owns 89 kilowatt peak of solar panels on our roofs. The other is Halton Loon Hydro upstream has two Kaplan turbines and when operating they can generate up to 160 kilowatts of hydroelectric which is enough for 200 homes. So overall we, we estimated that we save about 540 tonnes of CO2 every year. Finally we've got Halton Mill which is an old mill building that we've eco-renovated and turned into a low-carbon events and workspace with co-working and shared studios and classrooms. Two more projects um, being developed by members of our community. One is a community land trust which is building 20 
passive-house homes on a site next door for social rent and shared ownership. And the other is a senior co-housing project. This, I think, is a really good quote. So, there is no power for change greater than a community discovering what it cares about. Lancaster Co-Housing started, uh, was built in 2012. Next slide. Um, and like the video said, they've looked at the climate emergency holistically. You're going to be talking about transport and food, and that's a lot of Lancaster Co-Housing does as well. They looked at the energy that's first reducing energy, how the energy supplied, and then how do we make our own lifestyles less carbon while still living a very comfortable, thoroughly modern life. Um, but that, that quote about there's no power greater than the community finding what it cares about really is exemplified in Halton. So Lancaster Co-Housing was built. Um, it kind of provided a demonstrator site, not only to the local area, but also to the city council that something like this was possible. So when I started working in planning, I started writing policies based off of Passive House so that when we work with developers, we start to reduce those, the energy use in buildings. But the other thing is it brings people together who have see that something's possible. So people from Lancaster Co-Housing said, we don't have enough affordable housing in our, in our town. So what are we gonna do? Let's build it. They formed a community land trust. They started getting grants. They went to the city council. They said, hey, can you help us out? The city council uh, gave them some grant as well as officer support. And last year, 20 households moved into these passive house homes. Another group of residents in Halton, some of them also at the co-housing said, actually, you know what we need is some smaller homes for when we retire. And there's not enough of those in Lancaster. So what are we gonna do? They formed a group with people from, from across Lancaster and they're going to be building uh, the Halton Senior Co-housing which is about 14 to 16 units, depending on the planning permission, which is in right now. Um, and they should be building this summer. And it also inspires other kinds of living. So not everybody wants to live in a house, but everybody needs a home. This is a former um, a nursing home in Halton, and it was looking for, it gone out of business and it was looking for a new use. And the city council supported what's called a housing cooperative to buy the building. They also got grants and they are currently retrofitting this building, so putting in new windows, putting on solar panels, putting on a heat pump. Um, and this is gonna be a cooperative housing which with ensuite rooms and shared kitchens that are rented out below the uh, affordable rent level. That's what I've got for you today. Thank you very much and we look forward to your questions later.